So today we are going to print our linoleum blocks that we've been working on. In the last couple days, we made the stencil, transferred it to the linoleum block. Um, we learned about our carving tools and today we're going to print them. So your block is uh, four by six. I have cut this paper to be 16 by 12. So you should be able to get eight prints. You are going to get your 12 by 16 piece of paper and you're going to obviously put your name on it and class code. In this case, it's 6C, but it could be different depending on what class you're in. Okay, and then you're gonna set this guy aside. There are different colors for this. I'm just demonstrating with white right now for you guys. This is going to be one of those projects that you're going to want to stand for. Obviously not at this particular second, but when you're working, slide in your chair and stand. I'm going to have different colors at different tables with about two to three brayers. I told you that the class prior was printing, so in case you get a brayer that's a little bit wet, just take a paper towel and make sure that there's not oops of water anywhere, like on the edges. And we're gonna be doing some cleaning with the paper towels anyway, so you'll see. All right. So most of your printing trays will look like this, with the exception of a couple, when you first get it. This is our brayer, so it is a uh, rubber roller, kind of like a wall roller, right? that you would roll paint on, but this is designed for printing. Whenever you are not using the brayer, please make sure that the handle is outside of the tray. This is what your tray is gonna eventually look like. If I leave it with my handle sticking inside there, I'm gonna get ink all over the bottom of the handle. So have it sitting to the side. When you get your ink tray, well, let's talk about inks real quick. So inks are water soluble, which means that they can get cleaned up with water, at least the ones that we are using in class today. There are some that are not. Um, they're a heavy body, which means that they're really thick. They are designed to print. So it's thicker than acrylic paint. Um, you probably could print with acrylic paint. And actually we have, when we did the fish prints, we used black acrylic paint. In this case, we are using ink. So um, you're going to have a pool of ink at the top of your ink tray. You're going to take your brayer and you're going to put it in the ink and pull straight down. Do you see that my brayer is not currently moving? It's just pulling that straight down. Okay. Now, I'm going to roll all the way through. I am not going like this. I am picking my brayer up so that it spins some when I'm um, on the lift. Because if I go back and forth, I'm only getting about three fourths of my brayer covered. You should hear that crackle. Does everybody hear that? Yeah. Your texture on your tray should kind of look like um, a popcorn ceiling is a good example. So it's like a medium texture. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you don't have enough ink on your tray and what it looks like when you have too much ink on your tray. But now that we have our brayer loaded and our tray is good, I'm gonna set that aside for a moment. And then on my scratch paper, I'm going to keep one side of my scratch paper for inking. Okay, this one side is gonna get filthy. All right, I'm going to take my brayer and load my linoleum. So wherever I see the ink is what's gonna to transfer to the paper. I'm going to go up and down 
I'm getting those edges real good. I'm gonna go side to side. I'm trying to get like a glisten here to see. Come on, zoom in. I'm gonna add a little bit more ink because it's a little matte. I want it to have a little bit of like a satin finish, a little bit of a shine to it, but not super wet. See how there's a little bit of a shine? Okay, so I'm gonna set my brayer down, handle out. Where'd I put my paper? Oh, right here. I'm gonna take my paper keeping it out of my ink area. And your very first print has to be in a corner. It has to be in a corner or else the rest of your pattern won't be lined up. So I'm gonna stick it right in the corner. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take this piece of paper, I'm gonna fold it in half so that we have up to four clean surfaces to set on top of our linoleum plate and rub. I'm not pounding, I'm not smacking. If you pound it, you're probably gonna move your linoleum and you're not gonna get a good print. So I'm making sure to get the edges, I'm just adding pressure. Pull this aside. Pull that up. Okay. I'm going to use the same color at least twice. Could I use the same color three, four, five times? Probably. I probably wouldn't go more than four though, because we're going to have a total of eight, unless you want the entire thing to be the same color. So I'm going to re-ink this. I want to show you when you don't have enough ink on your tray. So the texture is tiny. If I kept going with this, eventually I would start, if you ever see your styrofoam through your tray, you definitely don't have enough ink. Okay. Um, there is a little bit of texture. This is what your plate or what your linoleum should look like, not your ink plate. You should definitely have more on your ink plate. I'm gonna use what I already had on my brayer since I pulled some of that up. So now, I could, oh, wrong way, definitely wrong way, go, Diagonal, or I could go next to it. The thing is you kind of have to set up your grid. Like you have to start in the corner and then work off of it. So your choices are from your corner to a diagonal, from your corner beside or beside. I'm going to do diagonal. You don't have to put this paper on your scratch paper. I just have limited space here for the screen to pick it up. <laughs> so I'm gonna go diagonal, I'm gonna set that right down. Once you place it, even if you mess up, once you place it, it's there. You can't move it. You can't pick it back up and try moving it to another location. Pick that up. Now, I thought I had enough ink on my plate, but do you see how you can see the paper through there? It's kind of, that's called ghosty. It's a, a ghost print is what you would do to get the excess ink off of your plate at the very end of class or when you're done using it. I need more ink on my plate. So I'm gonna show you one more, what it's like to have too much ink. Oh boy, maybe I, okay, there we go. 
So do you see how those are stripes? Yep. We don't want stripes. So I'm just gonna spread it out some. And now I have the popcorn ceiling again. Again, Ink. Much better print. With the exception of right up there. All right, I wanna show you how to wash these off. Because you're gonna to wanna to switch colors, right? Oh, it's time to wash these off. They literally rinse right off. Um, I'm surprised that this didn't stain this block. Colors like black. Once you rinse it off a couple times, like your block's gonna be gray. This came remarkably clean. This cannot be wet, however, when you go to print another color, okay? So you have to dry off the back and get in the nooks and crannies here and dry them off. What's up, hon? Um, the ink won't go in that spot. Like the ink will get rejected. Okay. Then I can go to a different color. Take my paper, take my scratch paper, reload it. Um, at the end of class, these all need washed. So we have a little bit of a cleanup today. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this, guys? Mm 